Um, let's quickly fucking recap or finish off the Adam 22 uh, beef with t Row and AD and stuff, right? And him waving a white flag. I find this absolutely hilarious, but obviously not surprising that Adam 22 has now accepted defeat. It's actually funny how quickly somebody's aggression, um, what, what would you call it? Combativeness changes online when they realize there's a threat of physical violence. It's unfortunate because in actuality, the whole beef is dumb, right? The whole beef that they're having is fucking lame. All these guys in their mid thirties, getting into their forties with kids and shit, beefing over this sort of stuff is ridiculous because at the end of the day, they're beefing over a podcast, right? It's absolutely lame. But the fact that it's got here, it's actually funny to see that that Adam 22 that was barking and, you know, talking about Smith and Weftons and banging on the table and saying that he's not afraid of anything and they have to show me something, all this sort of shit, is now the guy that's waving the white flag and saying, I don't want any drama. Please leave me alone because he saw what happened to Desto Dub. And again, Desto Dub didn't even get touched. He got approached. He got intimidated. Um, he got pressed, as they say, in the States. But he didn't, he didn't actually get physically harmed. But still, that alone was enough for fucking Adam22 to say, no mass. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. So big up Chick Smooth for the recap. Let's watch this video quickly. The big 22, not the 22 stir. Adam, what happened, man? Don't tell me a little light full core press got you scared. Now, for months, Adam 22 has been going at AD, T Rel, and Pun, clowning them, provoking them to come at him, telling them that he's not scared, not really taking them seriously. Well, after this weekend, when Desto Dub was confronted by AD, Ace Pun, and his guys, Adam 22 is waving the white flag. That's correct. Adam 22 is now begging for forgiveness. Now, Adam 22 has a show with whack 100 on no jumper make sure you guys go check it out this episode was actually very good adam 22 started off the show by showing a timeline event for the fed leading up that's how you know you're scared isn't it when you put together a piece of when you write on a piece of paper the timeline of events to basically justify why you said what you said or to explain the beef away that's when you know you're fucking scared like this is absolutely embarrassing to be quite honest especially when you think about the 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 bass in adam's voice when he was speaking about those guys and again you can say what you want on the internet i'm i'm a big believer in saying what you want to say to somebody and then also not wanting to fight them you can do that if you want to you can but what you can't do which is why i hate some people do like adam 22 and even academics does it they want to do everything they want to say what they say but they also don't want to fight but then they also want to pretend like they do want to fight. It's like, no, you have to pick one or the other. You can't be the victim and the bully at the same time. You have to pick one lane. And the fact that he couldn't keep, you know, consistent on either thing, or he couldn't pick one thing is the most annoying part. But I'm just imagining him pulling out a piece of paper and writing the entire timeline down to explain why he got to where he got to. I find that fucking hilarious up to his beef with ad and tyrell as you guys can see here starts with the breakup in march and then ends with tensions flare after act provokes tyrell now adam admits that he misplayed his hand when he got ad and tyrell to stop talking about him but yet he continued it's just the conversations that i've been hearing behind the scenes about how this could escalate both from them on stream but then hearing the private conversations going on <clears throat> amongst people on the no jumper staff and everything and you have to also have to imagine, if you're Desto Dub, right, you have to be looking at Adam 22 another way as well. Because that thing that he did about, I'm not involved, it's nothing to do with me, when fucking eight, when, when what you call it, when Pun and the Ace Boys and stuff pressed fucking Desto Dub at, after a Sexy Red concert, you have to be looking at him differently. You better be like, what the fuck is going on, man? I was just sitting in the studio laughing, key keying with you, and now I'm getting pressed at, after a Sexy Red fucking concert for a beef that I didn't even you know, start. I'm not even a part of. Like, Adam is, oh, Jesus Christ, bro. You have to be careful with people like that. You really have to be very careful with people like that, to be fair. And it just doesn't really sit right with me. I feel like oh, it's sure. on me at this point that I have to, I have to go out of my way to intentionally try and de-escalate this situation and acknowledge that I was in the wrong. Now, I'm not under... Yeah, exactly, Stannis. You're right. He was trying to play the academics playbook, but I think academics, as much as I don't like his approach, and I think that whole, like, you know, acting like you're a journalist or a media figure, but then trying to bully or talk tough to people online, I don't like that because, you know, you don't want to fight, but then you keep talking like you do want to fight. That's not cool. One thing academics does that he does really well 
he just doesn't put himself in that position. Academics would never be at a sexy red concert. He's never going to be at these shows, especially in LA, where all these people are going to be after him. You know what I mean? He talks his shit online, and for the most part, he avoids all issues by not going outside or not being at the bait places. That's what he should have done. But obviously, you know, Adam22 lives in LA. It's, it's basically impossible for him to avoid these guys forever. There's going to come a point where he's going to bump into them. So he knows that. That's why he's basically waving the white flag because he, he saw what happened to Desto Dub. And again, he didn't get touched. He just got approached. And he's picturing in his head. If that scenario happened to him, they would have definitely thrown a chair at his head. There's no way that he was not going to get hit. So he doesn't want any of that drama. So I completely understand. But it's just, why are you talking like the way you're talking to me before? You know what I mean, just, just, just chill and enjoy your life, bro. It's not that deep, really. The impression that these guys are just going to like instantaneously forgive me and everything's all good. I know that this is going to be an issue for a significant period of time, but I'm just saying that I've seen where this is going. I don't want to be the one who's responsible for it. I'm going way out of my way to take the L to just acknowledge it's gonna that. It's going to take more than that. Okay, you're right. But I've made some bad decisions <laughs> and all this, whack. and I'm just saying I'm opting out. I'm de-escalating. No, no, they no. don't have to accept, escape, or, uh, accept that. They won't. I'm just saying that from my perspective, I'm not going to feed into it anymore. I'm going to leave it alone. Obviously, they're still hey, going to be on a, a hunt for my hey, head yo. and everything. But I'm acknowledging <laughs> that I've made a lot of mistakes in this whole yo, thing. All these That's, that sounds like police officer talk, isn't it? They, like, it kind of sounds, again, as much as he's taking some level of responsibility for it and some accountability, which is a big thing. Because one thing about Adam 22, he doesn't take accountability for anything, right? I still think his biggest crime especially online was the way he fucking treated house phone with that um trans person coming on no jump and basically exposing his business and stuff right and the fact that he took no responsibility at all for allowing that person to come on his platform and not even vet it or not even look over stuff and edit out that clip that bit where she said you know allegedly her, her and fucking house phone had some sort of sexual activities and shit like not expecting not accepting responsibility of that if I was in those in those guys' shoes over on jumper, I would have taken that as a big kind of red flag, because him and Housephone were really cool. So the fact that he did Housephone that dirty should have been a, a sign for everybody that this guy is not to be trusted. So it's, it's a it took it should it probably took a lot for him to do what he did. But of course, fear can do a fear can do an interesting thing to a man. Do you know what I mean? And he's really fearing for his family safety, especially after what T-Ross said about beating up his fucking four-year-old daughter. So, you know, he, he did the right thing, to be fair. Crazy threats. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. And all I had to do was let him know that I wasn't scared. Haven't heard a peep since. Now they don't have anything to say about me. Even though I've been popping my shit way worse than ever before. Jesus Christ. Z-Rail was crying. Like, literally, actually, voice croaking up, tears coming down his face. It sounded to me like he was crying. I'm at Disneyland, so I'm not 100% sure, but he was crying. Imagine doing this with your... Imagine being a multi-millionaire, you know, with your daughter in fucking Disneyland and beefing over this sort of stuff, like, and trying to add more fucking fuel to the fire when you know you're not really with it. Like, why would you do this? It's it's such a, it was always a dumb tactic in my opinion. I always thought a dumb tactic. Don't get me wrong. I still think there was a reason he had every right to clap back and reply. I understand, especially after AD T round all those guys left no jumper. There was a period in time when they were dunking on him, right? They were really trying to. And plus, I think he went away to his honeymoon, so it looked like he was taking a break from the pod, and he looked like he was depressed or whatever, right? There was a period where he kind of went missing, and those guys obviously took a lot of joy in the fact that they were doing their own thing and they were away from fucking the white overlord and the culture vulture of Adam Twenty Two. But he should have got got his leg back, said what he wanted to say when he came back, and then kind of left it alone. The fact that he tried to go back and forth with them and then tried to talk about physical violence and how he's not scared and he's got guns and he's got security it's like that's when you start you know all that tough talk is like that's a bit too much then you go into tough guy territory then you go start going to like goon territory and obviously you're not a, you're neither of those things so it's like why would you do that especially with people that don't have much to lose or they want to you know they want they want to prove themselves to people it's just unnecessary weird tactic and he said that he could beat me up are you fucking serious? Bro, you know those handicap signs that you see everywhere? That's you. Jesus you Christ. are handicapped. You only have one functioning arm. Even if you had both functioning arms, you weigh 96 pounds. You ain't doing nothing. You got scared nobody. he's looking this around. This dude is actually delusional. <laughs> and he fully Delulu. admitted that he can't 
defend himself with words. Really just no jumper reaction channels. Maybe it's just the creatine that got me going. That defending yourself with words thing is always so annoying in it. When somebody baits you into replying by insulting you and then you're like, I don't want to talk anymore, let's fight. And then they like, use your words. It's like, no, like we're men. Men at, the, at a certain point with a guy, there's only so, so much of back and forth you can do. Either we fight or you just stop talking about me. Do you know what I mean? That, of some people are not going to do that, fair enough. But then waving a white flag, it's like, oh, come on, Adam. Come on, bro. But y'all been gone for like five, six months. And what do you got to show for it? Two husky motherfuckers running after each other in the parking lot in a mixed drink show. What? <laughs> mixed drink shows. Y'all thought you could compete with me? <sighs> Big 22? Hey, maybe you got it in you. <laughs> mixed drink show. I'm just not seeing any evidence of it. Hey, and since you are no jumper reaction channels, I just gave you content for the next month and a half. Million dollars each of one girl. All my ops have never had a hundred thousand. Jesus Christ! I put a hundred racks on his head. He put a rack on me. Mm -mm. There's an asymmetry. I'm going to teach you guys a new word today. There's an asymmetry. Do you know what an asymmetry is? <laughs> asymmetry means that <laughs> these things cannot appear coinciding side by side. Hey Adam, there's an asymmetry between that story. <laughs> Honestly, he's such a dick he's such a fucking dick and it's actually good to see it's actually good to see him getting humbled to be honest the humbling was actually good to see i'm not gonna lie um again as much as if it was self-serving as much as it was a little bit disingenuous the fact that he did accept some responsibility did kind of wave the white flag and said hey i'm gonna de-escalate now and leave it was good but it's just unfortunate that he put Deso Dubs in the, in the crosshairs. He had nothing to do with it. Yes, I don't think laughing should be a fucking, should constitute you getting pressed, to be fair. I don't think that's kind of fair, but it kind of street rules are street rules. But the fact that he put somebody else innocent in the crosshairs was unfortunate because imagine if that was somebody else from No Jumper. Do you know what I mean? Like, he put other people at risk because of his fucking weird war with these guys. And if anything, at the heart of it, I still feel like these guys deep down just miss each other anyway. You know, all this aggression, all this animosity really is because of a bit of frustration that they couldn't just work it out because uh, th there was a time when No Jumper was fucking booming with these guys. It was really fucking fun. And they kind of brought a new lease of life back into the fucking show and the channel. Um, obviously, at the time, they were kind of friends. AD, obviously, more closer to Adam than anybody else. But, you know, men don't really find a lot of friends in their, you know, older age. So the fact that they find all new friends and they're making money and stuff, that was fucking great. Yeah, and it kind of didn't work out. So I think deep down, a lot they just gutted. Really, they didn't work out, and it's just shame that they couldn't figure it out. But to let it get to this point where you're going back and forth and threatening violence to people that you don't really want to have violence with because they may have people that they know who are willing to crash out was really dumb. And I think the fact that he saw it in full HD with Desto Dub, you're like, you know what? Tesla Dub knows some of those people there. I'm sure he's given AD some free tracksuits and shit over the time. So he thought, hey, if they can do Tesla Dub that way and he's black, imagine what they're going to do to me being the white culture vulture. Do you know what I mean? It's like the white devil. He knew to wear the white flag and I think it was the right tactic. And hopefully they kind of end and go back to doing content now going forward because it was getting a little bit redacted anyway, how they were going back and forth to be fair. I'm not going to lie. It was getting fucking redacted. So I'm happy it's over. I'm happy it's kind of over. I'm not going to lie.